So we're sitting in the oldest tavern in America, 1795, enjoying a brown ale, and I am a happy man. <laughs> Why did you pick the state park as opposed to an RV park? Yeah, so this is actually only the second state park that we've stayed at um, on our trip of over a year. The reason that I chose it is because of its just the convenience factor, honestly. It was very reasonably priced and we're only about eh, half an hour, give or take, from downtown Boston. We're about an hour from Cape Cod. We're about 45 minutes from Salem, Massachusetts. I mean, there's just we can get into Rhode Island down to Providence in about an hour as well. How much does it cost? Is it reasonable? It is. It's it's about the average price for um, from what we've seen. About thirty three bucks a night is what it costs here with electric. Again, no water, no sewer. That's just electric. They do have non electric sites that are like six bucks a night cheaper, but uh, we had to have the electric. I don't regret that decision. Welcome to Wampatuck State Park. So even though this campground doesn't have sewer or water stations or water spigots at each site, we do have a double dump station here within the campground plus a potable water uh, outlet right up here and throughout the campground as well where we can fill up, uh, whether we're filling up jugs or filling up the RV tank. Uh, so it makes it very doable situation. So this is one of two bathhouses on the campground. So no sewer, no water hookups, no problem. You just come here, get clean, do what you need to do. I mean, they're pretty average for a campground and while we've been here, they've been very well maintained, haven't had any issues with that, so it's been fine. So another cool thing about the state park is they have a pump track, which is very useful when you have a very active teenage boy. He's been riding all over, like that. Like that. <laughs> so the pump track is actually about a mile and a half from our campsite. So he's also getting the exercise riding to and from uh, the pump track and it's just perfect for getting a lot of energy out. So what has the stay here been like for you as far as meal prep and stuff? Has it been a lot more stressful or? A little bit. I mean, as we've said in past videos, we are not campers. We were not campers before we went on this trip. We're learning. <laughs> we are learning. So dry camping for me was something that was kind of new and um, I did my research. But uh, we have a plastic Rubbermaid tub that I put in the sink and everybody puts their dirty dishes in there. And that way not all the crud goes down the sink or the water and that kind of thing. So it keeps our gray tank from filling up. And then I just fill the bucket with soapy water, wash my dishes in there, dump out the soapy water outside, fill with clean water, rinse them, and don't have to mess with filling up the gray tank with unnecessary water. Those kind of practices um, paired with the bathrooms that we have here for showers and all of that stuff actually allowed us to go six full days on our relatively small tanks that we have uh, in this travel trailer. We had enough fresh water and enough capacity in the, in the waste tanks to go six full days. So it's really worked out really well. I know you asked me about meals. Hmm. So I've chosen meals that do not dirty up a lot of dishes. That is key. So foil packet meals, uh, which we did on the grill. Yeah. We're going to grill up some pizzas. Wish me luck on that. <laughs> and <be> first. <laughs> I've done some one pot meals. And then, of course, we've eaten out quite a bit. I mean, it's Boston. Just once or twice. <laughs> Yeah. It's Boston and we went to Cape Cod, we had to eat out there, so we have eaten out a little it's bit rough. more. <laughs> it's rough. It's really rough. So, but yeah, I definitely did more meal planning before we came here and while we were here just to dirty up as less dishes as possible. Okay, yeah. So I wanted to dirty up. Dirty up. Dirty up. <laughs> dirty up. Dirty up. Dirty up. <laughs> okay. So I definitely did a lot more meal planning because I didn't want to dirty up a lot of dishes. <laughs> dirty up again. 
So the first place that we got to go to and explore was Salem, Massachusetts. In Salem, they've got a red line that's running on the sidewalk all throughout the town. It's called the Heritage Trail, and it just guides you to all the different historic sites and attractions in the city. So really handy to have that and then a map to go along with it, obviously. It allowed us to see as much as possible in the few hours that we got to spend there. We also got to tour House of the Seven Gables that the book is based on, so that was that was really neat, especially for Hannah. She's She's a big literary buff, and so she just ate that up, and it was it was really fascinating. It was good. And then you ate somewhere cool. We ate at a place called Mercy Tavern, which I would definitely recommend. It had a burger there that was incredible. I couldn't even pick it up. It was so messy. It was one of those I just had to eat with a fork. But that, with a good dark beer, good porter, oh, it was recommend Mercy Tavern, definitely. So another excursion we went on, which is nice and close, was Plymouth, Plymouth Rock, and Cape Cod. And the town of Plymouth, so cool. It's just this quaint little downtown area with all these shops that we went in, like record stores and bookstores and candle stores and everything, every store you can imagine. Hippie stores, I think. Yeah, it was just <laughs> such a cool town. I just loved it. I want to go back and explore. But, um, and then we went down to see Plymouth Rock, which it was smaller than I thought it would be. <laughs> it was, you know, you expect when you're going to see something like that, it's gonna be at least bigger than a Volkswagen Beetle, but this didn't quite beat the Beetle. I was thinking even bigger than that. I don't know, when I thought of Plymouth Rock, I thought of Plymouth Rock. Yeah. But it's still very cool. They had an inscription on there, 1620, and there was a volunteer there that was kind of giving us all kinds of facts about the rock, and that's the actual location that's never been moved. That's where it's always been. That's what fascinated me more than anything. I was shocked. Yeah, so, mm -hmm. but yeah, and then gift shops, and just a very neat place to go for a little while. And then after that, we went to Cape Cod, which we're retiring there. <laughs> Did you know that? Surprise! <laughs> no, I didn't know. Oh, okay. Well, yeah, we're going to retire there. Anyway, yes, Cape Cod. Now, Cape Cod is this place that I've always dreamed of going. I've always heard about it, but I've never done a whole lot of research, and I didn't realize that it's like 15 towns inside is what makes up Cape Cod. So we stopped at the visitor center and talked to a really nice lady there, and she was like, well, how long do you have here? And we're like four hours she said that is not enough time which we knew but uh, it was just kind of that's all the time that we had so she recommended us going to Falmouth Falmouth and uh, it has white sand beaches and had a lighthouse there the Nopska lighthouse you could walk right up to you get your picture taken in front of it and then there's a little pathway down to the beach and the water is so warm oh it was incredible <laughs> it was very warm so yeah a lighthouse warm water sandy beaches beautiful boats and and we're looking out across the water at martha's vineyard mm -hmm. just a little ways out there it was just it was surreal yeah and seeing the ferries take people back and forth so we are definitely coming back to cape cod yeah possibly by ourselves anniversary yeah. trip or something getaway definitely yeah, a getaway so i recommend it spend longer than four hours <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we also made our way into Boston, and for that excursion, we actually decided to take the subway in, which was a good choice. It worked out really well. We drove about 25 minutes from the campground here, parked the truck, took the, the subway in about another 30 minutes or so, and we just got dropped right there in Boston Common, right in the middle of downtown, and were able to just explore from there. So kind of like Salem, uh, Boston has what's called the Freedom Trail that runs throughout the town, throughout the downtown area to guide you to historic sites, attractions, all of that stuff. So we were able to see quite a bit uh, in the small amount of time that we had there. One of the coolest places for me was, it's called Old South Meeting House. And this is where uh, Benjamin Franklin was baptized. He, he was born and grew up right across the street from it. He was baptized in this Quaker meeting house. But this Quaker meeting house was also the location where they were discussing the tea tax and deciding what they were going to do about it. So it was really the, the birthplace of the Boston Tea Party. That's when they said, we're not gonna take this anymore and, and took action. Uh, those are just a couple of the small things, but just a, so much history in that tiny little uh, meeting house. It was just incredible to walk through there and see some of that. So after we finished with the Freedom Trail portion of the city, kind of exploring that, we went out a little bit further and made our way to Little Italy. And oh my goodness, it was like, that place is so alive and just so incredible. We, we literally just felt like we were walking around with our jaws just on the floor, just at the, 
Just the vibe there. It was incredible. I didn't get to go. She did not get to go. So I'm making her feel really bad <laughs> right now. But I mean, there were like bands playing in the street. We did this on a Sunday. And so bands playing in the street. And then we found this little gelato and cannoli place and got some. <laughs> <laughs> and enjoyed that for a little while. Uh, Could have hung out there all day without a doubt. I mean, it was so cool. So if you make your way to Boston, I highly recommend you get to Little Italy and soak some of that in, get some of the gelato. Trust me, you will not regret it. You're taking me back. Yes. Sitting in the oldest tavern in America, 1795, enjoying a brown ale, and I am a happy man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have beer. No beer. Except Coca-Cola. I have Coke. What'd you order? I ordered the vegetarian burger. Yeah. Yeah. So you know how I mentioned that I didn't get to go to Little Italy and I was sad? She was sad. I was very sad. Yeah. Well, Todd got me here. I did. And it's beautiful. It is a and cool just, place still. And we just ate at the oldest tavern in America. In America. And it was so good. It was awesome. Good beer. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Good Video beer, home. good food, good wine. This is a cool place. So if you get yourself to Boston, come to Little Italy. You will not be disappointed. And you'll make your wife happy. Yes. <laughs> So this morning we're about to take off from Massachusetts, head into Vermont for a few days. And before we leave, we just have to say here at the end of the video, thank you, Massachusetts. Um, it's been surprising for us, honestly, just the, the courteous drivers, the really nice people that have stopped us in the street to offer help and just chat with us. And uh, just some of the nicest people, most considerate people we've seen on our trip and just really impressed with it yeah i know we'd always heard that new englanders were maybe a little harsh or rude or we have experienced none of that none <laughs> they have been so nice and like todd said just stopping us on the street if we look lost or recommending a place to go or yeah and here in hingham like if you're at a left turn unprotected you just let people go and it's just the craziest thing we were, yeah. it took us a few days to notice that that's kind of that's just a thing here you just if you can let somebody go in front of you you let them you go, go. You. you stop you you <laughs> give them space you let them go I'm like I am not used to this this is <laughs> this is strange but it's it's a good thing it's a wonderful thing and we've had a great stay here uh, so thank you Massachusetts thank you Boston and now on to Vermont yay we'll be back though